Well, hey folks, so we're gonna keep working on the, the Mustang, keeping trying to move forward on this. So as you may remember from the, the last video, we've been working to replace the exhaust system on the car because it, well, it was shot. Uh, we've encountered a, a few problems. Well, one major problem, I guess, is the way to put it. We uh, got the some bolts that uh, broke off in the head while we were trying to get the exhaust manifold off. So I've been trying to work to get those out with a, not a lot of success. We have, uh, pardon me as I'm heading in the sun here, but, uh, well, let's just say the bolts are not in an easy place to get to, and I've tried a couple of things um, to make that happen, mostly with the use of uh, reverse or left-handed drill bits and some bolt extractors, uh, tried penetrating oil um, and whatnot, but they're still stuck in there. So based on everything I've read, the only way to really get those out successfully without monkeying things up too bad, you got to pull the head off the engine. So that's what I'm going to do today. But first, let's kind of take a look at what where the bolts are um, and what I think it's going to take to pull the head off because I've never pulled the head off uh, an inline six. Pulled it off a 289 once, or the head's off a 289. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna get down here and look. Um, hopefully, you can see a couple of things that are kind of hard to do. Let's see if I block the sun a little bit. There we go. So you can see I still have the bolt that is stuck in there. The head broke off that one uh, in there, and I've tried to get some vice grips, and I just can't get a grip on it. Uh, we still have the bolt stuck in up here that you can see where I've tried to drill it out and didn't work too well. And then back towards the the back there, I've got one down there that hopefully you can see. And once I get around this heater hose, maybe, um, I think there's yeah, the one up top there also stuck. So, uh, yeah, that can arc. It looks like I've got a freeze plug in there that probably ought to be replaced. Anyway, but so this is the the head and the intake. So on the, these four 200 inline six, the head and the uh, intake are all one unit on the, the stock heads. So you can see the head. There's a, if you can see the seam there right here. So this, everything up above is the, the head. So I have to pull all of that out. So what do I, what do I think we have to do to, to do that? Well, uh, obviously the carburetor right there has got to come off. That's not that big a deal. Been there, done that. So we know that's got to come. Uh, the valve cover that I painted and all has to come off. The plug wires and plugs are going to have to come out, so I'm going to have to pull those out. I'm going to make sure I mark those so I know which order they go in. Um, it looks like the thermostat and thermostat housing here are going to have to come off, which means I'm going to have to drain the radiator out. What else do we got? So, um, of course, there are uh, head bolts. There's one. Let's see if I can get in there. See, so, yep, there's one right there. One back there some ones there and there's probably a couple that are up under the valve cover which means we may have to pull off the rocker arm assemblies on that so huh, a lot of stuff's got to happen of course if I pull the radiator out um, if I drain it I can pull it out which I wanted to do anyway because I've got a replacement in there I couldn't fit it with the fan on here so I'm gonna try to see if it'll fit now I can also pull the fan so these pulleys off clean them up and get them painted I also have a new belt to go on there for that of course I already got the uh, alternator off but I might be able to pull that alternator bracket off there too and get it cleaned up so anyway a lot of good stuff to to go on so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start disassembling um, probably go ahead and start the radiator draining and while it's draining out I'll go ahead and start pulling the carburetor off I'll go from there I'll see if I can set up a the camera on a bipod and let y'all kind of go along for the, the ride here but uh, it may not work too well we'll try um, with the sun it's going to be hard at this angle but at least I can see so with that we're going to get started 
Okay, so we've got the radiator drain out through the little, uh, let me see that, the little pit, pit cock down there, valve, whatever you want to call it. So that's draining out to, and then start taking off the, at least this hose right here that's got to come off. Right, the top hose on the radiator. And once again, we got the carburetor off. Uh, also, and then next, I guess we need to pull off um, the, I guess I don't know what this is, manifold or whatever, here to get that off. So, and definitely got to pull those hoses off. So, hose comes out of the top of the water pump in through there. Then that would actually, I've got it looped in right now because I got a leaky uh, heater core. But then that would feed into the heater core and back into the cooling system uh, there. If we had the heater core in place, but we don't. So uh, let's see. What am I going to do next? Um, probably go ahead and remove the transmission vacuum tube connection there. And I'll worry about the, about the um, spark plugs last. Yep. Anyway, so progress is being made. So progress continues. So we've got a bunch of the hoses off now. So you can see I got the the uh, heater hoses off. There, got the main hose off from the radiator. Radiator seems to be mostly drained, mostly because I'm sure. Yep, well, it's weird, it's coming out the top. Mm. Ugh. Mm. Um, unlike Vice Grip Garage, I don't like to taste car fluids. Um, that was not tasty. So, still need to get the vacuum line that goes to the transmission. That one's there. I painted it fairly recently with the valve cover. And then we'll get to these. Um, Spark plugs, that's the word I'm looking for. And of course, we gotta get up here to the thermostat and all that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna pull that off before I take the head off or wait till I get the head off to take it off. Don't know, we'll figure it out as we go. I said, never done this before, but progress has been made in the right direction, I hope. So, we continue. So progress continues, so now I've got the, uh, I don't know, the adapter, the bracket, I don't know what that's called. Anyway, uh, for the carburetor off, it's completely off. Also got the transmission vacuum hose disconnected, uh, and I've gone through and disconnected all the uh, spark plug wires. Now what I did do, so I can make sure to uh, put them back in the right order, is I marked them with tape and a number on each one starting from the front going to the back now i don't know if that's actually the right you know cylinder one cylinder two whatever that's just the order i know that they have to go back on when i put the, the head back in so um anyway hey i just noticed a there is a tag for the engine down in there i'm not sure if i can get there it is i don't know what the I have to take a look at that. I didn't even know that was down there. So, yay. Found something new. Don't know how I missed that with all the work I've done on this side of the engine. You know, a uh, new coil, new fuel pump, new plug wires, new plugs, valve cover painting, all that. But anyway, so um, we continue. I'm kind of glad I did this because there are some definite hoses I need to replace on here that... Uh, can take care of so I guess now I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling the valve cover back off and of course I'm putting all of my parts and I'm coming off back down into here so you can see all those going through so yay so we got some more steps forward so I got the valve cover back off um, let's see <laughs> That new valve cover gasket I just put on is going to have to be replaced. The good thing I actually have, as I come out here in the sun, 
That box you see hiding up under the stang right there, that's a whole um, top end gasket kit. So it includes the head gasket, valve cover gasket, um, thermostat gasket, uh, and some other things. I think valve seals and whatnot in there. So what I think I have to do now is remove this whole bar with the rockers on it out which is these bolts on the top and then this whole thing comes off this whole assembly from what i understand comes off then i pull the push rods so these things here are the push rods uh, what that does for non-mechanical types is inside uh, here, or inside the engine anyway, is, you may have heard something called the camshaft. Uh, it's a, it's the name of a shaft, but it's got lobes, elongated lobes on it that as it rotates, it makes these rods that you see here um, go up, whoops, up. And down, and when that happens, it pushes on the uh, rocker here, which then this thing that's in the spring here, that's the, the valve stem coming up. So you have an intake and an exhaust valve on each cylinder. Intake is where it lets gas get into the, the cylinder, um, and then the piston compresses it, and then the spark plug ignites it, forces that down, and then as it goes down, uh, the exhaust um, port or valve will open the second one, the exhaust valve here, right? So there's the, I don't know if you can see it with the sun. So right here's the, the, the first one, which I, I think is the intake. I could be wrong. And then the second one lets the exhaust out and goes out through your exhaust system. And these push rods do that and all of this is controlled. Anyway, and I'm sure I got some stuff wrong with that, but that's how this rudimentary shade tree mechanic goes. So once I get that out, then there are bolts in here. So I've already shown you the one that's out here. So it looks like for every bolt on the outside, just about there's a corresponding bolt inside, which makes sense because you want to keep pressure on the piece pretty equal across the whole part. Um, so that would make sense. And so I guess my next step is to go ahead and remove the, the rocker arm assembly here. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, folks, so um, I've gone ahead and pulled the bolts out of the rocker arm assembly. Now, I've heard, and I, you know, again, I've never done this. I don't know that you have to be careful about how you pull those out because they're under tension. And you can actually warp the, the thing. Now, I don't know if it's just going in that you got to worry about that or pulling it out. But what I did is I loosened each one a little bit at a time gradually to, to get those out until they all were loose and that it was play. So now I'm going to pull this or try to pull this rocker arm assembly up and we'll see how it goes. Try and leave the push rods in there. And there we go. One rocker arm assembly out. And there's Erica pulling up so she can do the brakes on good. So next step is to pull those push rods. And i got to figure out how I'm going to pull them out and then remember the order in which they were in there because you're supposed to put them back in the same order. So uh, that's the next step. Okay, so I've pulled the, the plugs out, got that out. I am looking. These are new plugs. I put them in not that long ago, but definitely see it looks like these are getting oil in the cylinder. See, some of those are pretty, pretty bad. So I think I definitely have some valve issues on the head. We'll find out more when we get out. So what I'm planning to do to keep the push rods in order, I actually have a sponge here. Okay, sorry about that. I bumped the, <laughs> the keys to my wife's Mustang in my pocket and set off the little arm. Anyway, the plan, as I said, is to pull those out and put them into the sponge. I think the sponge will hold them in place. Uh, of course, I'll put it in a bag or whatever to hold them, but uh, that's the goal to keep them in order. I don't know of any other better way. So anyway, once I get those out, then it'll be time to start removing 
the bolts. Okay, folks, the moment of truth is upon us. I've got all the bolts out. Got the thermostat housing off, so there should be nothing else holding this head in place. And I've already rocked it some, so it looks like it actually came loose pretty good. I'm just going to get Erica over here once she's done. She's actually over there hiding behind her car, working on her brakes for her car. I guess we're a mechanic family somehow. I don't know how that happened, but not really mechanics because she actually works in a medical office and I work doing GIS stuff. So anyway, now we're going to pull the head off. I'm going to try to get my little tripod set up so you can see us do this. This might be fun. So. If you can lift on the front, I'll get on the back. Okay. And we'll try to manhandle it towards the other Mustang. I'm going to have to wait a little while. Don't think that too much. That's the thing. That was out of the way. It is? It should be. Can... There we go. Yeah. All right. Your stuff's nasty. Well, it's a. Freaking ancient car, what do you want? <laughs> Trust me, it's cleaner than it was when I first started working on it last year. And it's it's been 122 years. Now, okay, you gotta slide it. I gotta get a better grip on it, Trip. I got it. Okay, let me set it down for a second there. <sighs> All right, where were we putting it? Oh, let me hold it. Get a towel or something and lay it down there. Towel? Where? There's one back there. Like an actual towel? Yeah, because I don't think we have a box to lay it on. I'm sorry, Alexis. Your, your, your beach towel has been donated to the parks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Whew. I can come up here and grab the camera. So, the head is officially off the car. Know. Cylinders don't look too bad from what I can tell. Still see it looks like some cross hatching in there, which is a good thing. Of course, like I said this engine is not the original one. It was rebuilt in 87. But there she is, all six pistons. If you ever wondered what it looks like, there goes Erica cussing about her brakes. And then here is the head off the car. So let me get you out of the tripod here and try, pardon me, while I move the tripod somewhere. Stay there. Okay. Get down here. Get my, all my gloves. So let's go back over now and see everything a bit better. Ooh. So we got down here. So this part here, this long part, it's actually called the log which I don't really know, I'm sure it stands for something. But I don't quite know what. Anyway, that's actually the intake. So that's where the carburetor sends all of the gas into the individual cylinders. And what I'm gonna try to do is, if I can, ooh, <laughs> lift up on this thing. Ooh. So you know what I'm gonna do? Sit you down for a second. I'm going to put on my glove to make this a little bit easier. Okay, back up. There we go. So here's where all the exhaust is. And then down here is where the combustion chamber, where the valves are. And see, those are pretty nasty down there. Yeah, I was burning some oil, which means there's oil getting in here from the top, which means my valve seals are shot. 
so it doesn't have to be replaced. The plugs are going to have to be replaced on here, but I might be able to, I don't know, it's going to have to go to a machine shop for sure, pretty sure. But anyway, it's off now. So you've now seen how to remove a head off a 67 Mustang. So next trip thing to do is, well, let's think about it. Okay, so next step I think is take this thing to a machine shop. Go ahead and let them get those bolts that are broken off and stuck in there out properly. Then they can resurface. They can also uh, pressure, pressure check the whole thing, make sure there's no cracks or whatnot to see if it's even worth messing with. Um, and then assuming it is, they can go ahead and put in new valve seals and get the valves ground down so they're performing well, yada, yada, yada. So I think that'll be next. I think it's bigger than what I am able to do at this point. I've got it off this far. I might as well try to do it right. And there goes an airplane. Yeah, okay, airplane. The plane, boss, the plane. Sorry. Having a 70s flashback. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and sign off and call it a video and, uh, We'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, the squirrel says hi. For those of you from Eurissa, there's my strategic planning squirrel. Squirrel!